Um, yeah, let's just pray in the quietness of our, quietness of our hearts. Let's just go ahead and um, you know pray that. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God. We thank you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, because it's such an awesome privilege, Lord, to, to just draw near to the King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you for giving us access, Lord, to come to the Holy of Holies, God, through your precious blood. Father, we thank you that we can draw near any time. And Lord, we thank you, God, for all that you've done for us, Master. And Lord, we thank you that even today that, Lord, you're revealing your heart to us. You are, Lord, uh, revealing new things, Lord, just like you, God, um, did for Jeremiah, oh God. So we call to you, we call unto you, Father God, that uh, today there will be revelation, Father God, in our hearts, Father God, that you will quicken your word to our spirit, Lord. That, oh God, that you would draw us, to yourself, oh Father God, in many and wonderful and different ways, God. And we commit ourselves, Lord, into your mighty hands, Lord, towards this Sorry, end. Sorry, we don't thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Right. So, um, so last class, okay, yeah, last class we uh, we heard all the wonderful testimonies um, of uh, you know so many different people of how uh, the gospel message reached you, how it was preached to you, and how you responded to it. It was really wonderful to hear that, and uh, I hope you had a good weekend where you could um, you know where you could share with uh, some folks about what God has done for you and what God has done in you. And the best thing is to you know share your story. And um, you can share it with conviction. You can share it, um, you know, uh, with that authority because it's something that has happened to you. And um, and uh, yeah, I hope you were able to do that. Uh, on another day, we'll probably, you know, uh, um, share our experiences of that as well. Right? Okay. So today, <clears throat> we've been as we've been studying about uh, different things related to preaching, homiletics. Um, uh, the, the arrangement and the presentation. Um, so we've not come to that um, the presentation aspect yet. Right? Just laying the foundation. Uh, we're talking about the person, and uh, and then later we'll come to the presentation. Right. So we see that um, you know uh, it's not just about eloquence. It's not just about uh, speaking ability when it comes to preaching, but uh, it starts uh, deep within. It starts in the heart of the person. It starts in the person itself. Because um, I, I don't know if you've heard this uh, saying, uh, typically in the advertising industry, they say that the medium is the message, right? In the sense that if you're going to be, um, uh, the message that you're conveying, if you're conveying it through a particular medium, right? A mode of, uh, um, a vehicle, uh, which could be um, a mode of mass communication, a vehicle of mass communication, which could be, you know, newspapers or maybe television or uh, now, you know, social media. The media itself is a message. Okay, the kind of media that you use itself conveys a particular message. So, um, so uh, you know, if you look at the preacher, the preacher himself, the person is the message. The person himself or herself uh, so it, it talks about a life that is lived even before the message that is preached, right? And uh, uh, the reason being that uh, our lives speak louder, okay? We might speak the most eloquent or share the most eloquent of messages. We might preach it. But there's all, something that is always or which is louder than the sound of our voices, we might use the best PA system and uh, we might use the best, um, uh, you know, all the teaching aids and, uh, and preach that message. But there's something which is, which is far, far uh, louder, clearer, uh, which is reaching the audience. And that is the person himself or the, the person herself. 
right so the person uh, is uh, very very important and so that's why we have been laying that foundation and uh, even going through all that you know even uh, after uh, about while well, talking about the relevance, how relevant is this, it? Is it to preach the gospel? Um, is it is it really necessary? Is it really important in the way we do it? We looked at several scriptural examples, and in all that, uh, the person really mattered. Right? So we're going to, today. We're going to look at um, uh, the call of God, the call to be a communicator or the preacher of um, God's word, uh, preacher of the gospel, and also what are the qualifications. What are the qualifications required? You know, is it is it uh, uh, is it enough to know the language, to speak the language, and to speak it well, to present it well? Is it enough to um, you know make the complex things simple and uh, and use all all kinds of um, you know equipment or aid possible? And is that is that enough, or is that something more? Okay, so when we um, uh, we're on chapter four, I think yeah four. And this is on uh, page 12, if you're following in the notes, page 12. So um, we cannot separate the person from the message. We cannot separate. When we say person, we're talking about uh, uh, the character. We're talking about the integrity. We're talking about uh, all the all the qualities uh, of a person, all the internal qualities of a person. You know, let's look at, you know, uh, character, for example, character is really like a foundation. It's really something that is hidden. Um, it is, uh, it, and it manifests itself in several different ways. Maybe in a in a time of crisis. Maybe in our you know regular conversations with people, in our mannerisms, in our uh, reactions to uh, situations, in our responses um, to people. Right. Um, so character manifests itself in that way, and character is really the foundation. I'm sure you would have studied in the first year if you if you've um, looked at you know the um, the minister's foundation uh, class. We looked at um, how character is like a foundation. It's below the surface. It goes below uh, below the ground. It's hidden, but that is what uh, gives strength structure. So a building without structure, uh, an edifice without, um, I'm sorry, a, a structure without a foundation, an edifice without a strong foundation, strong at all. And if we are looking at longevity in ministry, right? If you're looking at, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe decades of ministry, then uh, we better make sure that character is uh, is strong and and deal with whatever is making our character weak right maybe there are some things that are bothering there are some things that we are you know going to repeatedly and um, maybe fearful of and it's it's important that we deal with that and uh, with the help of god of course and uh, he's more than willing to help us he's more than willing to strengthen that part of us right because scripture says that uh, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Right? His strength overshadows, overwhelms, and makes perfect, or, or uh, makes establishes, you know, um, uh, makes perfect our weakness. Whatever is there, it it just makes it uh, turns that into our strength. So yeah. So coming back to the call of the of the preacher, um, uh, Timothy. Uh, uh, in First Timothy, Paul writes, and this is what he says in First Timothy chapter four and verse sixteen. He says, "He says, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you." Okay, and um, if you, uh, maybe we should just read the verses before that also. First Timothy chapter four. Let me just put it here. First Timothy. Um, 4 and 12 to 16, right? So, um, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers. And he lists down certain things. Right? Be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Okay? Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. 
do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them and your progress will be evident to all. Take heed to yourself, meaning, you know, um, uh, uh, be careful. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Pay attention to the doctrine, the teaching. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. So here in these um, uh, five verses, we see um, uh, maybe, you know, very important instruction for ministry. Uh, for anyone starting out in ministry, for anyone in ministry, uh, very important instructions here. So the first thing we see is that... Um, uh, Paul writing and he's saying, of course, he talks about doctrine. Of course, he talks about preparation and uh, and, and so on. Uh, but in verse 12, you see that he's saying, be an example. You let your life be an example to the believers. Even before you, um, you know, uh, get into the word and start uh, uh, exhorting them and teaching them and so on. Let your life be an example. Right. Let no one look down on your, uh, you know, your, um, because just because you're young, let no, don't look down, but you be an example to them. You be an example. And he lists down several things in, in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Right. So um, character, uh, the way we conduct ourselves, um, it takes precedence over our presentation. Right. So many times we are, <clears throat> we are in awe of, uh, of the presentation and of course the message uh, touches our heart we are because but and then uh, you know but we are really in awe of the presentation the way it is presented the way it's communicated and and um but behind that right and and uh, is the life that is lived out first right so um yeah so um the the call of god so god calls and commissions God calls, God prepares, and God commissions uh, people in ministry. Okay. So even when it comes to this call of um, communicating the gospel, this call of communicating or preaching, uh, it could be in, like we said, it could be in different settings. Right? It could be in what we call as full-time uh, ministry, but it could be in different other settings as well. Right? Uh, there is the call and the preparation and the commissioning, okay, um, and and the, and the call of God, right? How how does it take place? You know, uh, I think in, in the last session uh, while we were talking about um, the ministry of the evangelist, pastor, and teacher, and we're talking about the call and uh, and, and what are some of the specifics and and so on. Um, uh, and uh, you know, I remember I was sharing about how for me personally it was a growing conviction. So, um, so that could be one of those things that it could be a growing conviction uh, about uh, doing certain things, right? Uh, about stepping out and uh, preaching. About it's a growing conviction. It's a compulsion, right? And you find yourself doing that. Um, so, uh, uh, if, if you want to look at a thorough study, you know, um, I. We should refer to um, uh, fulfilling God's purpose for your life, and uh, I think uh, some of you would have read that. Um, uh, it's in. Um, let me just put the link here, yeah. so <clears throat> you can go there. Fulfilling God's purpose for your life, and uh, maybe you used it as one of your texts for Minister's Foundation. But um, I just want to quickly go through some of those things and um, in, in the call of God, right? Um, and uh, and the purpose of the call, purpose of God's call, how do we recognize it, and what could be some of these things? You know, it, it, so here's a kind of a checklist that um, that is put together uh, in this book, and it's uh, it's really good if we can know this, right? So the first thing is that um, uh, to recognize the general teaching and the instruction of God's word, like general teaching principles that are in God's word. Now um, we cannot do away those. Right. So we read them, we understand them, we study them, we understand it, and we live it. So general teaching uh, of principles in God's word. Uh, how should a believer be? How should I relate to God? And uh, and uh, you know about worship, about um, about studying God's word, about prayer, and so on. So we find uh, so many uh, things that are mentioned. The general principles. So. 
um, so I I find that out and I conform myself to that. Okay, so we find that we renew ourselves to that truth. So we cannot disc or, or ignore that and still want to hear God's call in our lives, or still want to um, you know want to know. Of course, there's nothing wrong with, but God would always guide us back to knowing the gentle principles and teaching which is there in God's word, right? So uh, if you look at Romans 12 and verse 2, um, Romans 12 verses 1 and 2, um, just a minute. Okay, yeah. Uh, verse, two, verse 2, sorry. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay. So we don't conform to the pattern of the world, but our mind is being renewed. We renew our minds. And what do we renew our minds to? We renew our minds, obviously, to what God says and his thoughts and his ways. So Paul says that uh, you know we will be transformed by it. Our lives will be changed by it. And there's something else happening. There is the proving or there is the um you know uh, you know we we can test and know examine and know the will of god okay so uh, if you want to know the will of god you know this is one of the ways that we renew our mind to the word of god to the ways of god and our mind will discern the will of god so so many times you know god calls but then our mind cancels right because uh, we our mind uh, we are not renewed our thoughts are not renewed to the word of God. Our thoughts are not renewed to his thoughts. Um, renewed meaning made new, renovated. We are not really accepting that, maybe accepting that truth in God's word. So uh, it is still maybe resting on carnal things, resting on fleshly things. Right. So here comes an instructions, which, which instruction or a, a leading, which is uh, spiritual. But our mind, which is um, dwelling on carnal things, which is uh, meditating on fleshly things, outrightly rejects rejects that, and say this cannot uh, this cannot be, right? Oh, uh, it could be ignorance. It could be you know the fact that our mind is completely filled with the fleshly thoughts and carnal thoughts, and we reject that. So the first thing is uh, general principles. Um, uh, instruction that is in God's word to to have a strong foundation of that to be anchored in that and to uh, allow this truth to renew our minds and we intentionally do that say this is what God says and uh, I, I see that what I'm thinking and how what I'm meditating on what I'm imagining and uh, is uh, is not in line with God so let me change that let me go uh, with what God is saying right and um, that is not restrictive you know that is actually freedom and I'm sure you've um, I don't know, uh, uh, in the 80s, uh, uh, the song by Pink Floyd, you know, we don't need no education, we don't need no thought control. I don't know if you know the, if you heard that song, but yeah. So, um, you know, the, the thing is, is that I don't need any thought control. You know, uh, uh, don't put me in a box. Don't put me in a prison. And, uh, you know, so the, the minute we're talking about um, renewing, renewing our minds, you know, sometimes that's the thing that comes. You know, uh, uh, God has created me to be a free agent, so I want to think whatever I want to think. Right? But the one who's the most creative, the one who is um, who is um, uh, who's desiring freedom and wanting the best for our lives, wants us, desires that our minds be renewed. Right? In that, there is safety. In that, there is freedom. In that, there's creativity, right? So uh, we don't need to fear. We don't need to be uh, afraid of conforming to the word of God, conforming to the ways of God, right? Um, and uh, we know that that will release us into greater freedom, release us into greater creativity, right? Okay, the second thing is um, 
to recognize the seeds in your life in the sense in the uh, right from the early age what were those things that were that were dropped into your heart what were those things like uh, and just like how the source uh, you know sows the seed what were those things that uh, that were sown in your heart and uh, maybe uh, it could be a recognition of uh, some ability some special interest some um, some talent or something that that was there right from the start so uh, that's another indicator just look back and say okay what is uh, what are some seeds in my, what is what did uh, what was there put there in my heart uh, 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 early on in life okay some of those interests some of those abilities some of those uh, talents we're talking about you know all the natural uh, things right god will use that god will use those also the the third thing is to recognize the stirring within so we looked at the general instruction we looked at um, the the seeds uh, general instruction and the principles of god's word we secondly we looked at uh, seeds uh, what are those seeds that were sown in our hearts early on in life and the third one is what are those things that stir us up you know uh, i remember when um, uh, when the first time i actually saw someone um, my age you know it was uh, i was i was very young and uh, we were at a wedding and um, i saw a, a, a boy of my age and he was um, he was playing a guitar and it was i think it was at a wedding reception or he was playing a guitar and you know the minute i saw that there was such a powerful stirring within you know now looking back i realized that it was like i want to i want to do that It's such a stirring within in fact i would uh, uh, after going back home i i i was taking out a, you know a badminton racket and i was just you know just imitating the guitar playing and i would do that and i and i went and told my mother you know i i want to learn to play the guitar i want a guitar and of course my mother who did everything possible to you know get get me a guitar in those days and and enrolled me for class and and, and so on so there was a, such a deep stirring within and uh, another time also uh, you know when it when it came to ministry there was a there was a stirring within that you know that i i want to do that uh, i want to do that okay. um so um, maybe it is a stirring within every time you are put in a certain situation you're you're looking at and there is a stirring deep it's it, and it's not something that is a uh, superficial you know a fancy right uh, that always dies down hey i i want to be that and then after some time that's gone but this is something very very deep and uh, in in your heart and there's a stirring okay so and then the the fourth thing is we recognize the grace of god okay what is god graced us with grace can be um, we look at three things right it is divine favor it is character it is enablement so um so what has god graced us with you know is there any special grace on your life um and we're looking at some of these gifts of grace and they are also indicative okay they are also point to the direction uh, in which god wants uh, or wants us to take in our lives lord what are those graces that is that is given so so that's the that's the fourth thing that we see and the other thing is to recognize the leading of god's spirit okay now uh, this is something that all of us uh, grow into right all of us grow into you know uh, uh, i remember the, in the, the first first year class there was a there was a question you know how do i hear the voice of the spirit you know how do i know god is speaking and uh, and we've been learning that we've been learning that and we've been practicing that right to be obedient um to uh, to his leading to his instructions um in the ordinary course of life right uh, in our, in our in our daily lives so to recognize that uh, how is god speaking to me and uh, some uh, you know uh, some general things that we know we know that he bears witness with our spirit he bears witness with our spirit and we see that in romans chapter 8 he bears witness with our spirit so that we call out abba father so his spirit bears witness with our spirit um and there is a quickening secondly there could be a quickening of god's um, written word you know i'm just going through this i know that i'm not putting up anything presenting anything but you could check out um um uh, 
I'll go back to this. So you, you might already have this uh, book with you, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. You know, just go go back to it. It's, uh, I think, pages 20 or pages... Um, yeah, um, yeah, pages 13 onwards, right? Okay. So we recognize the leading of God's Spirit. Very, very important. You know, many times we... Um, uh, we you know, as human beings, we relate to the natural world. We 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 receive information from our five physical senses, and um, you know, by the things that we see, the signals that we receive, uh, you, know, you know, optically by the things that we receive um, uh, auditorily through our ears, what we listen to, and uh, what we touch and feel, what we taste, smell, and so on. So um, we are so used to that, right? Um, but we we understand that um, there is a spiritual faculty in the sense that I am not just a bunch of cells and muscle and tissue and bone, but I've been created in the image of God. And in the image of God, I am a born again spirit man, right? connected to the spirit of God in union with God's spirit and the spirit of God dwells in me, right? So what is God sharing or communicating to my spirit? Okay, very important to know that and to grow in that right what what is he prompting me to do uh, what is he uh, you know what are those impressions what are those um, uh, pictures what are those words um, uh, what are what are some of those things that he's putting in my heart okay and then uh, the thing about dreams uh, what are the dreams that he's giving what are the visions uh, maybe he's uh, you know uh, giving me and and of course what are the prophetic words what are the words which uh, god is quickened to someone else and they are they are sharing as a body of christ and uh, what is god communicating to that what is god confirming to that right so we we see that it's um so we need to know that uh, yes it's is it contrary to god's word then we know that it's not the leading of the spirit is it uh, something that glorifies the lord jesus then we know, yes, it is, uh, the, it is of, of God, it is of the Holy Spirit and so on. But, but it's a journey again. Okay, it's not the formula. It's not something that we, you know, uh, uh, that day we put together and say, okay, this is it. But it's a journey. We grow in this because it's a relationship with God, right? Okay. Um, the other thing is to recognize the circumstances. Okay. Uh, what uh, when we look at our circumstances in our daily lives, you know, not all circumstances are designed by God. Right? The devil also is very active in um, in creating certain circumstances, certain, uh, certain storms, and certain challenges, and so on. So, um, uh, so understand, you know, is it of God, you know, that I'm going through this, that I'm facing this, but or is the enemy doing this? Right? And um, and so we know that no matter uh, what circumstance you know if it is good yes god uh, you know if it's a difficult thing and and we know that god is with us and he will take us through if it is something that is um, that is of the enemy we know that god will turn even that around for good you know, he will lead us in triumph in christ jesus right so uh, but to recognize those circumstances be aware of those circumstances and not just go with the flow Right, um, passivity is a is the greatest thing, uh, greatest destroyer of um, or a barrier to hear the voice of God. Right, uh, uh, be still and know that I am God. God says, but be, being still is not being passive. Right, our spirit is in a is the state of readiness. It's like the tongue of a of the like the pen of a ready writer. Right, so. Our spirit is, in a sense, is expectant, ready, waiting, not passive, right? Because passivity leaves the indifference. If you're totally passive, oh, what will happen will happen. We we tend to become indifferent, right? So, um, recognize the circumstances. Recognize godly counsel and wisdom. Okay, it can come from. Wow, it can uh, you know it can come from very very unusual sources. Recognize the counsel and the wisdom that comes from God. Understand you know 
uh, and then discern, of course, uh, know that it's, uh, you know, is it counsel from God or is it counsel from man? Is it just someone speaking from, you know, um, uh, speaking good things or is it counsel from God? So um, we recognize that, we discern that. And it can come from certain unusual sources. When I say unusual sources, it's that we never even considered. You know, maybe if it comes from people whom we look up to, whom we esteem, um, well, yeah, they, we are able to you know, receive that. But what if it comes from people whom we do not really esteem? Okay, godly counsel come from, can come from people who, uh, from, from some very simple folks, right? Uh, I remember the first time I, I shared my testimony in church and um, uh, I shared it in one service and also in another service, another location. So um, I remember, uh, you know, finishing that and uh, and I remember um, one of our friends uh, from the worship team coming and saying, hey, Jakes, you know, uh, just let loose, let go. Uh, don't hold yourself back. Uh, I didn't even realize that, that I was holding back. Uh, because of the content of the message, right? Because of uh, you know my life and testimony and so on. And uh, well, it's not a it's not a very pretty picture. So so he said, "Hey, Jakes, don't go, don't worry, go ahead, just uh, just let loose." Uh, you know. And I was able to do that in the in the next service, the following service. So um, it came from a very very unusual. So it's not like him to say that. It's not like him to. Uh, to to really uh, give any counsel of that nature, but it came. So, just an example to show that you know, in the call of God, even uh, God's call can be you know reaffirmed by such godly counsel, and it can come from unusual uh, sources. Okay, the other thing is that we recognize the times and seasons. Okay, when it comes to the call of God, uh, this is now very very important. To there are different seasons in our life, and. Uh, it could be a season of laying foundation. It could be a season of building up something. It could be a season of, uh, it could be a night season where, you know, things are dark, nothing is clear and, uh, and things seem to be like, um, you know, like a dark tunnel. And the only light we see or we hope to see is, uh, you know, through eyes of faith at the end of the tunnel, there's no going back. And uh, the only way to go is way forward, right? So we, we just keep going. So um, recognize the times and seasons, and recognize, more importantly, God's pattern of working in our lives. Okay, if God has called you to be an airline pilot, and then suddenly if He's calling you to, um, um, you know, be something else like a chef in a restaurant, you know, you, you know that, uh, or if you feel that He's calling, you know that you need to park that thought, right? And uh, really spend some time uh, on that, on that idea, and uh, and really make sure um, if if that is God, because He's been leading you in on a certain path, and suddenly there seems to be a complete change. See, not that God will not lead in such ways, but we need to make sure because God has a way or working in our lives. And there is a pattern of how God works in our lives, right? So, um, so these are some things um, that we can consider when we, when we think about the call of God um, and, and um, uh, call of God in our lives, right? Okay, so, so the thing is to bring our life to conformity, to conform to the, to the ways of God. That's the, you know, the basic uh, thing. To the ways of God, to the principles of God, to to bring our life uh, and to conformity, and and to be led by the Holy Spirit. Right. Um, just wanted to uh, share a little about what are the qualifications uh, for someone who is called to be a spokesperson for God. Who's called to um, speak forth the mysteries of God? Who's called to preach? What are some of the qualifications? Okay, now uh, we see uh, those qualifications listed in Scripture, and um, we see in, in Paul's epistles to uh, Timothy, to Titus, uh, uh, especially to Timothy and Titus. We see this. We read this. Right. Um, if you look at First Timothy, okay, First Timothy chapter three. Um, this is what we see. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. So bishop there um, really meaning overseer 
um, and he desires a good work. The bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, a wine not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. Um, um, for if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So this is about uh, overseers in church. And then he goes on to talk about deacons, okay? people who are talking um, and taking care of the administrative or the business side of, um, or the organizational aspect of church. So he's talking about deacons and he's saying, you know, must be reverent, not double tongue, not given to much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. You know, uh, you would never, uh, probably, you know, you would never think that that could be there as one of the qualifications or uh, one of the instructions for choosing a deacon, right? Holding the mystery of the faith which, with a pure conscience. And verse 10, let these also first be tested, then let them serve as deacons. And then he talks about some something something more in verse 11 their wives must be reverent not slanders temperate faithful in all things let deacons be the husband of one wife ruling their children and their own house as well for those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in christ jesus so that's um uh first timothy one timothy chapter three verses one to thirteen now this is a general instruction for uh, for a bishop, for an overseer, for a deacon. But we can take it for, I'm sure, uh, it, 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 it is also for a person in, in ministry and who is involved in preaching the word because a, a bishop obviously is looking after the flock, um, a flock of God, and he or she is, is preaching, communicating, excuse me, communicating what's in the heart of God. Right, so, so this we can we can understand that here are some things that are put down. So, well, if you look at this, um, a lot of it, it refers to character. Yes or no? Yeah. So, um, can you just tell me, you know, what are some things that are referring to ability, and what are some things that are referring to character? Okay. So, both are important. Ability and character. Okay, so um, maybe you can just put it in the chat. You know, based on this, um, these thirteen verses, what are some some things that are listed here that refer to ability, and what are some things that are listed here referring to character? Or maybe you can just unmute and share as well. Anyone? Okay. Not given to wine, gentle, faithful. Okay. Temperate, sober minded, you know, in verse two also. Ability holding the beauty of the word rightly. Okay. I never, I never saw that as ability, but oh, yeah. Ability should be to manage the family. Um, anything that you're sharing, Kennedy? Oh, okay. Okay, Prabhaka, ability to teach. Okay. Anything else which is listed as ability here? Okay. Verse four, obviously, one who rules his own house well, right? Um. So what do you think uh, outweighs, or in this whole list, what is the, um, when, you, when you check both, obviously we need both, but in the list, when you see the majority that is listed, okay, the most things that are listed are pointing to character. Okay. Yes or no? Yes. 
Yes, yeah. So when we when we see we see that uh, it is pointing towards leaning towards CAC. This is the thing. Now, um, now, why do you think it is so? You know, I'm I'm not downplaying ability. Now, um, please understand. Uh, we need uh, ability. Um, we should be able to do this. Uh, we should have the skill. We should develop our ability to do the work well, whatever responsibility it is, right? Um, but why do you think uh, there's so much of leaning and importance uh, or highlight on the character? Well, uh, Pastor, there, there's this saying that says that um, talent can take you up, but what keeps you up there is character. Mm. So the reason why there is so much um, emphasis on character is that at the end of the day, that's what actually distinguishes us from other from from other. People. Um, I'm sorry, say can can you be a little louder, please? Um, can you hear me now? I probably you just need to increase your volume a bit. I've increased it to max here. Yeah. Mm. yeah, slightly better. Yes. Yeah, so like like I said, um, talent or, or ability, let me put it that way, can take you high, but what keeps you up there is your character. Right. So, and um, one thing that sustains our leadership or sustains anyone's leadership is their character. If character is lost, you lose everything. And, right. Um, it is what actually distinguishes a good leader. character so if you were so good at teaching or so good at administrating things and you're lacking in character it can be uh, it can it can be repulsive to mm -hmm. other believers and even it can um, chase away people who were trying to even get into the kingdom because there will be no difference between those in the world and those in the church so it kind of distinguishes us in spite of our ability as a leader, if we have the character of Christ mm. as described in the verses there. Okay. Wow. Well, well, thank you so much. Yeah. Praise God. Okay. I'm just going to look at some of the comments here. Um, uh, Prabhaka, is it because it requires individual choice? Yes, of course. It, um, uh, you know, yeah. Skill can be, of course, developed, and skill is also ability. You know, gifts are received from God, um, but when it comes to character, it is developed over time. It it, uh, it involves the choice of the person as well. Um, yes, uh, Avni, because actions speak louder than words. Yes, that is true. Because I might have preached a wonderful message, but the minute I step off. The podium and do something which is uh, out of line or uh, which reveals my true character, then the entire message, the entire time that is spent ministering is is absolutely wasted. Like right? because um, uh, it just it just comes down, right? It just uh, cancels out everything. Okay, so we heard Kennedy, um, okay, um, Kennedy saying it affects other people. Uh, Rose, God can always supply the ability, but character is essential for God to be able to work through the person. Okay, character is the foundation. Without a strong foundation, without the strength of character, no matter how big the ability, it will crumble. Um, uh, Chris, uh, are you referring to my voice that you're not able to hear? Or was it say when you were sharing? Okay, right. Okay, fine. Um, then character tends to to manipulate God's ability in you. Uh, I didn't really understand that, Kennedy. Um, character tends to um, would you like to just explain that, please? I don't know whether I'm audible. 
Yeah, you are audible. But, but I think since we have to hold in respect the mystery of, the mystery of faith, so character tends to call some, give us some foundation on that. Because if you can't preach what you're not doing, or you can't preach, mm. like, you say you preach, what are you doing? Something of that sort. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So we, we, we see that, uh, you know, uh, character actually, um, like even what say you said, you know, and what you've learned uh, earlier, that character, actually, uh, the, the gifting can open the door. Right? It's so visible. It's, uh, it can take us to place of, um, uh, of influence. It can lift us up. But what really keeps us there and what really um, enables us to sustain uh, our ministry and sustain the ministering of the gifts um, is character, right? So character is the essence of a person that reveals the true nature. True, yes. Character attracts God's attention. Yes, mom. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all this. So, so we see that um, you know character is uh, very important. It takes a premium, right? So when we look at the qualifications of um, a preacher or, or a, a spokesperson, a communicator, you know, these are some things that um, that we can we cannot avoid. These are central. These are foundational. Okay, um, and that us if we want to sum that up, uh, let's go through some some of these things that are uh, listed for us in our notes. You know, by the these are some of the theologians and Unger and Gibbs and and this is what uh, Unger says that. The expositor, or one who's a, you know, a, a communicator, uh, is um, uh, has to be a regenerated believer. Of course, you know, he's saying, okay, that's that's very very basic, right? Uh, that's very basic. You know, how can you say that uh, a person cannot be a regenerated uh, regenerate believer, meaning a born again person, right? Um, but the fact is, there, you know, in today's uh, scenario. There could be people who are in ministry. There could be people who who, who want to do ministry who, who are not born again, right? Uh, and I think I uh, I shared uh, you know some time back, probably last year. I, I'm not sure if it's this class, but that um, you know I come from a CSA church, and in that church we were um, we had a visiting evangelist and worship leader, and he he shared the gospel. Normally, the gospel was not preached actually um, uh, very often but he shared the gospel and he gave a call for commitment and altar call and the first person to stand up and um, receive Jesus was the pastor of that church right so he uh, of course had been trained in the seminary and uh, and uh, and he was in ministry he would preach every Sunday he would but he was not he had not received Jesus right uh, and it it seems you know it seems strange, but then that is that is possible. Even when you read about um, uh, Charles and, and particularly John Wesley, you know they they went about they were ordained by the Church of England and they um, they went about doing their ministry, but they had uh, a specific experience with the with the Moravians, or uh, you know uh, I would, we can say that. Uh, you know, their life changed, and it is recorded for us there. And they went for what is called the Alders Aldersgate uh, meeting, and then they're they're doing their time with the uh, with the uh, Moravians, and and how their lives were changed. Uh, we read about that, so it is possible. So, uh, uh, a born again person, a person who is spirit filled and spirit taught. Okay, very important. It's taught by the spirit, filled by the spirit. Um, a person who is called and commissioned. Okay, so you know for sure that that person is engaged with God, traveled with God, journeyed with God, and God is opening up. God, God is putting that person in environments to be his spokesperson, right? Uh, a person of prayer, a person of exemplary Christian character, like we all looked at right now. A person of prayer, a person who communicates with God, who shares with God, who journeys, who goes deeper in in prayer. Okay, uh, very very uh, important. A student of the Word. You know, we never stop learning uh, the Word of God. There's so much. Every time, it's like it's like mining. And you know, where is all this coming from? I don't know if you've had that experience. You know, you read and where was this before? Right. 
uh, you you're continually learning you're continually learning because there's so much to god he's infinite and you're continually discovering new and wonderful things from the word of god um stirred up by the holy spirit revealed by the holy spirit and we see that right so a student of the word you know one who does not just read but studies the word of god and a person who uses the gifts the spiritual gifts that god bestows so um so uh, this these would be you know summing up the qualifications um of a person called to be a, a representative of god called to be a, a preacher okay sam uh, about character a lot of a character development yeah how does one recognize and resolve flawed character traits uh, maybe due to bad parenting okay so uh, well the holy spirit is the greatest teacher and also when we face certain circumstances and you, and you recognize the first thing is to recognize that there is a character flaw you know just because something has been part of our lives for many years uh, we take it for granted that is how i am this is who i am and this is how it will be right the first step is to recognize that something is out of line and this is not god's design okay and these were maybe put on earlier on in life and uh, there is a need for change to recognize that and the second thing you know i would say is um, you know knowing our true identity right knowing our true identity and that is what we've been studying um, all these uh, past few sundays knowing our true identity what we have become in christ so that we can shed you know that old identity not hold on to that old identity and say okay this is what i have become now i am reckoning myself dead to those things i i reckon myself dead to those things and alive to god in christ okay so we look at um we look at some more of that in our next class i guess uh, you need to go join the next uh, session so we'll stop here and then we'll continue with this on friday okay god bless you have a great day and uh, we'll catch up later bye bye thank you pastor thank you pastor bye bye thank you pastor Thank you, Pastor.